This prudent and severe commander lived for only 33 years, but had time to create the greatest power the world had ever known. Through 11 years of war, he never suffered defeat. Alexander the Great from Macedonia became the best known conqueror of all time. Alexander was the son of Macedonian King Philip II. The young heir's favorite stories were from the heroic poems of Homer. Alexander considered Achilles, the hero of the Trojan War, and the mythical athlete Hercules, his idols and his inspiration. Ancient Macedonia, located at the northern edge of Greece, in every possible way aspired to prove its link with Greek culture. Since he was 13, Alexander was educated by the preeminent Greek philosopher Aristotle. He taught the young man not only ethics and logic, but also endurance and self-discipline. Alexander said that he owed his life to his father and the skill to live with dignity to his tutor Aristotle. After the mysterious murder of his father, Philip II, 20-year-old Alexander was elevated to the throne and immediately went into action. He suppressed Greek resistance and destroyed the city of Thebes, then prepared for a campaign to the east. Alexander strived to surpass his father in everything and dreamed not only of subduing the powerful Persian Empire, but also of subordinating to his authority all known peoples of the world. In the universe there is an innumerable number of worlds, the young warrior lamented, but I haven't conquered even one. In the spring of 334 BCE, Alexander rode at the head of an army of 40,000 and crossed Hellespont, now the Dardanelles Strait, to wage war against Persia. In battles at the river of Granicus and at the city of Issus, the army of Persian king Darius III was defeated. The Persians lost their entire fleet and conceded the Mediterranean to the Macedonians. Alexander gained the loyalty of his troops by caring for the wounded and ordering tax relief for the families of fallen soldiers. The historian Plutarch wrote, When Alexander set siege to Phoenician Tyre, many city dwellers imagined that the statue of Apollo wanted to go over to the enemy's side. So the inhabitants of Tyre tied ropes to the statue and nailed it to the pedestal. Restrained as it was, the statue remained faithful to the townspeople. After a seven-month siege, Alexander reached the statue itself when the defenses fell and he occupied the city. This success opened the way to the Nile Valley. In gratitude for liberating Egypt from the Persian sovereignty, Commander Alexander was proclaimed the son of God Ammon and made Pharaoh. He was only 24 years old. After conquering the Persian Empire, Alexander the Great invaded Bactra and Sogdiana in Central Asia, now known as Afghanistan. Legend has it that to become a full master of Asia, Alexander had to solve the task of Phrygian King Gordian to untie an extremely confusing knot. Alexander the Great raised his sword without hesitation and sliced the knot. Ever since, the expression to cut the Gordian knot has meant to find an expedient solution to a difficult problem. Today we might say this was Alexander thinking outside the box. To strengthen his authority in the conquered land, Alexander erected over 20 fortified cities. So began the long histories of such cities as Herat and Kandahar in Afghanistan and Alexandria in Egypt. In 11 years at the command of his great army, Alexander formed a huge empire. It stretched from India to Istra, or today's Danube, and from the Balkans to Lower Egypt. Only the army's weariness after such a long campaign forced Alexander to finally turn back, a return journey from India to Babylon that took two more full years. Babylon became Alexander's new capital. Alexander the Great reorganized his empire. He drafted the Persians into military service and allowed Persian nobility to rule their state. He married Persian King Darius' daughter Statira, further strengthening his hold on power. Once Alexander made a great holiday, the so-called Wedding of the East and West. Under his order, several thousand Macedonian soldiers took Persian women as their brides in a mass wedding. In a move to put himself on the same level as his legendary idol Hercules, Alexander the Great decreed that temples were to be built in his honor throughout Greece. Orator Demosthenes remarked caustically, 
this youth thirsts for altars. So let them be erected. What trivia! The Greeks were compliant until Alexander moved to incorporate Persian ceremonies in Greek life. This they would not abide and refused to prostrate themselves before their governor. Alexander was ruthless in punishing the dissatisfied. This is illustrated by his treatment of his foster brother, Clytus. Clytus had saved the life of Alexander during the Battle of Granicus. When he declared that behind Alexander's feet all Macedonians stood, Alexander snatched a spear from a warder and killed his friend. Alexander the Great, aspiring to surpass Hercules, dreamed to subdue Arabia and Northern Africa and to sail out to the Mediterranean Sea through the Pillars of Hercules. But his great plans were not to be carried out. On June 10, 323 BCE, the great commander died not in battle, not violently, but simply by succumbing to a bout of malaria. The huge power he created proved unstable and could not last. Divided up amongst his military rulers, the Alexandrian Empire disintegrated. Still, Greek culture had spread to Mesopotamia, Iran, Syria, Judea, and Egypt, setting the table for all Western culture to follow. Alexander the Great of Macedonia brought together the civilizations of Greece and Middle East and started the period known as the Hellenic Age.